Good morning, everyone. Wow, follow on from my CV. I'd, the photograph that you saw before was, it was taken in Norway at a conference, and some people say to me, is that really you, Derek? You look, <laughs> you look very suave there. Uh, it must, must be some Photoshop uh, work done on that, I suspect. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me to speak at uh, today's conference. Um, I've had a, quite a varied career, uh, but one of the things that I, I remember quite vividly was meeting Neil Scales, because Neil uh, was head of Mersey Rail when I was head of projects in the Northwest uh, for the then rail track, then network rail. And he mentioned uh, no surprises. I gave him a few surprises, which I found out to my disbenefit, I've got to say. Uh, we ran over a few possessions uh, with Neil, and he soon let us know that this, the customer was not pleased. Quite right, too, looking back on it. Um, I've also, and it's almost 40 years now in the industry and construction, the best thing I ever did was working in construction. It's a fascinating area in which we had more young people want to join in the industry in the UK, and particularly females. I think it, there's a, the percentage of the female engineers is too low. It should be more. It adds so much more to industry. To, to industry. But it, there's one common denominator I remember in the years in construction, and that's bad behaviour. And I have to say I've been party to that bad behaviour as well. Bullying, macho behaviour, uh, not listening, um, and generally uh, waste, a lot of waste. Now that I've been party to it, I didn't realise it was waste. It's only when I got involved in lean, lean thinking, I began to realise there was so much waste in our industry. So, um, I'll just move on a little bit. So, today I'd like to just talk through a journey because the, the Highways England, and previously Highways Agency, has been a journey, really, and it's, it's had its ups and downs. Some things went well, some things didn't go so well in terms of lean, but overall, Highways England is still using lean in the supply chain and across the business. And the great thing is, I, when I left a year or so back, my number two is now direct, Director of Lean and Innovation, Paul Doney. And they've added the innovation into Lean, which I think is a brilliant idea. I suspect it was Mike Wilson, the Chief Highways Engineer, and Jim O'Sullivan, the Chief ASX ID as well. And I think it's an excellent combination of Lean and innovation. Uh, very briefly, Highways England, um, I left two years ago. It's, it's moved on somewhat, but there's a, it's a £120 billion estate. There's 18,000 structures. And it's interesting here, Neil, talk about the size of Queensland and other parts of Australia, the amount of infrastructure you have is huge and very disparate. Um, four million vehicles per day across the network, I think it's probably more now. And uh, it's highly congested. The English network, Highways England, used to be Highways Agency, they're a limited company with one shareholder government, uh, is dealing with high levels of congestion, it's too many vehicles on the road. But what we're dealing with in a similar way to you, I was, I've had a few days to look around uh, Brisbane area and I noticed you're using smart motorway. And smart motorway is a great way of using technology to reduce congestion. And in England, in the highways of England, they're using the hard shoulder. So they use a piece of infrastructure that uh, hasn't been used before and a combination of uh, technology as well. And control rooms. Now, we've used lean um, in, in smart motorways. We're using lean construction right across the smart motorway program. And that's a very major piece of work. I and mean, the road investment strategy for the next five years has a very high element of infrastructure on smart motorway, expenditure on smart motorway. One of the best days of my career was when we not only convinced the executive of Harry's England to use lean thinking um, in the supply chain, but also I convinced them to use it within the business. And when you start using it in transactional areas, procurement, within control rooms, with the traffic officer service, things really start to come together. And one very strong message I'll give you is that uh, it's very, very important, it's great here in what Neil Scales said today, to have senior management on board, senior leadership, and I'll touch on that in a few minutes. Without that senior leadership and down the line, not everybody has to be completely sold on it. In fact, my experience is the people who are pushed back the most and ask the most questions, maybe the most negative, turn into the biggest advocates because they're bright, they're questioning, and once you've convinced them, they become advocates. So it's a, a, an interesting point, I think, to remember. Um, so moving on a little bit, um, Jim O'Sullivan is now the Chief 
executive of High Bridge England. And Jim has come from the aerospace industry, and he's got very high priority on customer uh, service and what, serving a customer, but also ma major priority on safety. Just as Neil was saying about the number of uh, road traffic accidents and the, and the carnage we can have on the network. Uh, but he's also, more recently, since I left Hires England, and I've been told by my old colleagues, that he's now pushing very hard on continuous improvement. And the point to make here is that you can, I, I'm actually a lean geek. I'm fascinated by lean. I'm, I'm involved academically in lean. I'm, I'm involved in the Lean Construction Institute. But you don't have to call it lean. You can call it what you like, as long as you follow lean principles. Now, Fumbry and Water, for instance, do lean big time. They use value management lean but they call it lean to go. You can call it whatever you like, as long as you follow the key principles of lean. Um, the strategy is one of the, the High Res England strategy is one of the biggest, um, almost for a generation in infrastructure. Um, we're, we're deploying lean right across the whole of the supply chain. Um, I'll talk in a second about the, um, a minute or so, about the uh, maturity assessment across the supply chain and ensuring that they are actually doing lean. One of the things I did early on that um, gave me a little bit of hassle afterwards was to say, if you don't, to the supply chain, if you don't do lean, you don't work for us. I didn't have a particular mandate to say that, but it, it, they got the message very early on. And I did get some pushback, understandably. They wanted paying to do lean. And my view is uh, lean will make you more profitable. So why should we pay you? Because you know, you'll, you'll get a lot from it. However, we still spent two million pounds a year in upskilling and improving the capability of the supply chain. Again, that didn't always go down totally well with our executive. They said, well, hang on a minute, they should be doing it themselves. But I think if we left them to it, they wouldn't have done it. And I, do, I did feel at the time that it was necessary to upskill them. So moving on, um, I guess some of you in the audience don't know a lot about lean, that's quite understandable. Uh, but it's based on the Toyota production system. There's some very good books to read uh, if you're a person that learns by reading. I like reading, but not everyone does. But the one that you can get hold of is Build Lean. You can download that from the CITB website for free. And also there's a number of PDFs and extra information that goes with it. We built, we built, build Lean was put together and uh, edited by LCI and other organizations. It's a kind of, kind of narrative of project manager's experience of using Lean. So I'd recommend it. It's a good way of understanding it in a bit more detail. Right, my good friend, Professor Chris Keller, who kind of invented lean construction exactly almost, almost 25 years ago, um, would, would be upset if I didn't mention the word waste. Lean removes waste in all its forms. There's all sorts of forms of waste and, that lean identifies. And then once you put your lean goggles on and start looking around, you'd be amazed how much waste there is. I've been living in, for a few days in the Mercure um, Hotel, and I spent a bit of time looking out the window at construction sites nearby. There's an awful lot of hanging around goes on. There's a lot of materials in the ground lying around waiting to be put into place. And also, there's a lot of very good examples of um, large buildings being put in place using production techniques, which I'm very impressed by, and they do in London routinely. Productionization is now seen as standard in lean construction. But put simply, it's all, lean's all about the customer, understanding the customer, understanding the, what's known as the value stream, i.e. the processes, how processes work. I must say to you, lean isn't just about process. Process is an important part. It's understanding where the waste is in a process. And it's ensuring flow. Um, one of the things that happens in construction a lot is stop starts. Um, the, the variation occurs very widely in construction for all sorts of different reasons. And also pulling materials, resources through the, the system. Not pushing them through, but pulling them through. And finally, aiming for perfection. It's one of the hardest things to understand in philosophy that you never really stop continuous improvement. You're always attacking waste and, and aiming for perfection. Now, the other point to make is that something I, I discovered very early on, that lean actually is a hum humanistic activity. It's really about people. And if you look at people in this picture, uh, if you go back 100 years, they're probably not that much different. The people who built the Manchester Ship Canal or the, the Sydney Bridge, Golden Gate Bridge, whatever it is, they're just the same people and they have the same motivations. They all want to come to work, do a good job, enjoy their work and learn. Interestingly, they all want to learn as well. Now, 
Uh, I mentioned at the beginning this, the story of uh, how I was England. My story for eight years as, as the improvement director. Um, the reason I kind of got involved in it was that Nermo Kotecha, who was the, the major projects director at the time, asked me to go back in to be Northern Director of Major Projects. And one of the things that I've always done in my career, and I guess you would do as well, is I don't like footsteps in the snow. I don't like to go back and do the same thing. I get I'm a little bored and fresh, I like to do different things. And Nermal said, well, I know you're into value management. You've done it in the railways and also nuclear. You're in interested in lean. Why don't you bring lean into the business? Because Nermal had worked for Anglian Water, who are really big on lean, collaboration, alliancing, etc. And in fact, a lot of angling water was a big inspiration for me. A guy called Dale Evans uh, gave me a lot of inspiration and a lot of help in the early days. So we, we embarked on the programme of Lean. However, uh, um, Christina mentioned that I was uh, involved in the Nichols Review. Um, and back in the 2007, the highways agency's programme of uh, work, uh, uh, infrastructure work, went from about 11 billion to 25 billion, oh, virtually overnight. And what happened with then was there was a, every project had a momentum all of its own, and we weren't testing the projects in terms of estimate and time frame, and we were giving ministers big surprises about the projects. And I can tell you, just like when I sat in front of Neil those years ago to tell me the possession overruns in one of the stations, um, going to see ministers in the UK tell me a project had gone from 15 million to 27 million was not easy to say. So the, the the Secretary of State for Transport at the time, Douglas Alexander, commissioned two studies. One was by Mike Nichols, who's a brilliant guy, consultant, and another was by the National Audit Office. And I was asked to work with them with a guy called Dave Gungell, and he produced 25 recommendations. And my goodness, they were brilliant recommendations. And I spent 18 months with a, a large team bringing those recommendations into high res agencies it was then. Um, now, one of the things that Mike said to me was that, you know, I think you're highly inefficient. You need to do something about the efficiency of how you deliver infrastructure. And that's why I became more interested in value management and lean, and the rest is kind of history for me. We formed a team, um, a central team. That's another message to pass over. If you're going to do lean, uh, it's important the owner, the client is, is a leadership. And it's important to have some sort of dedicated team to overview the, de the deployment of Lean. We formed a team. We also brought practitioners in from the supply chain and trained them, and they went back into the supply chain uh, to, to uh, practice Lean. Interestingly, the people who did that pr projected their careers, improved their careers, because what they did was they learned a transportable skill set, and a very powerful one at that. And I can give you loads of examples of people who've gone back into the supply chain from that training and become very uh, able and were promoted. We also did a thing called a maturity assessment. Now at the time we did all these, we put, we put together a strategy for lean, um, but we'd, we'd gone to uh, MIT and to Cardiff University and the, the, the SMMT, which is the Motor Industry uh, uh, Institute Society, Association I should say, and they had um, methods of um, measuring lean deployment in organisations. So we adapted those and we had a set of thing called HALMAT. Like all big organisations, we like uh, acronyms, we like, like acronyms, High Res Agency Lean Maturity Assessment Tool. And at the time, I thought, gosh, this is never going to take off. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to stall. As I said before, we'll ask for payment to do it. None of that happened. In fact, it's one of the best initiatives we ever took, that we ever took place, because we in High Res England now have over 35 um, pieces of history of our organisations, uh, consultants and contractors have progressed in their lean journey. And it's, a, it's been recalibrated a few times, it's done by moderation and by asking 10 questions, which I'll show you in a few minutes. The next step was um, when we uh, had a Boston Manor project. Uh, Graham Dalton, um, who was a previous chief executive to Jim Sullivan, uh, kind of didn't get lean at the time. I don't think he quite understood it. He's a very excellent chief exec. And what happened just before the Olympics, we had a major viaduct that um, had problems with its joints. It had to be renovated, it had to be renewed. And it was only a few months before the, the uh, Olympics. And that was the route that all the VIPs, the press, ministers, you name it, 
were going to drive over. And Graham got a very strong message. It had to be ready for the Olympics. And we sent in one of my teams, Sue Housley, with the Lean Toolkit, and worked very, in the, I must say, the, the supply chain, the contractors and the consultants, all worked very hard as well. We all cooperated. And we finished well before time. But the, the thing for me was, Graham went to Boston Manor and looked at the site, and I think the first thing he said, you watch the video today, you might disagree, first thing he said was, why are we not using all the computers? Why is everything up on the wall? Why have we got pictures on the wall? And Sue rightly said, that's how Lean works. You don't just look at a computer. It's important to have P6 programs, to have Gantt charts, but we do things visually. It's called visual management. And we also use standardized work, I think called 5Ss, etc. And from that day on, Graham really got the message. He became a huge advocate of Lean. And I think that's what happens. When you see it for real, you become an advocate. If you listen to me talk today, this won't necessarily make you an advocate. You've got to do it and see it to understand it. But that was a turning point, I think. Uh, and the other big change was uh, Alan Cook. This is maybe a message, really, again, if you're going to bring Lee into your organisation, is get people at senior level, hopefully they'll want to be an advocate or they'll understand Lee. And Alan Cook was our chairman at the time, and Alan had worked in the, was head of the post office previously, and natural savings and investment. He was a financial guy, but he understood Lean because Siemens had worked with him very closely, putting Lean in transactional areas in, and he was a big advocate of Lean. Um, so he, he became an ally and a mentor, and was, that kind of helped tremendously when and, and Alan got involved. Also, at the time, Alan wrote reports which changed Highways Agency to Highways England, a limited company uh, with a single shareholder government. But that allowed Highways England to become more arm's length on financially and do more of their own thing. And I think it, it, what's happened between then and now demonstrates such a good idea that was. Um, and also, a point to know as well, we, if you're going to do lean, write down your strategy. Don't just keep it in your head. Write down what your top-down strategy. You might want an action plan that goes along with it. And I, I heard lean, I've heard uh, that maybe um, people will be using pilot projects. I think they're very good. The only danger with pilot projects, if they're done in isolation, they become islands of success, and they don't join up in the rest of the organisation. So you'd be very careful. Just It's good to, to use a lean tool in a particular project, but uh, they need to uh, be across the whole organisation, and that's what we did with Highways England. Uh, there, was a, there was a £250 million efficiency target because Highways England is now a regulated uh, operation, so they have to, be, um, they have to give efficiency targets. And I know, about, I hear from my colleagues in Highways England, there are about £175 million towards that target already. And that is cashable. That's not cost avoidance. That's cashable. And that was one of the big changes that came in with Highways England. So it was a big, big movement forward. So this is a fairly typical possession on the, on the network. Um, again, you can see gantries going in for smart motorway and also major junctions, etc. Things that you've, you, those in the audience who work in highways would be very familiar with. And similarly in, in rail as well. Uh, one of the major changes that happens with highways agency was the bringing in of traffic officers. And I believe in Sydney they're, they're using traffic officers now. And again, a big breakthrough for us was when we use Lean with the traffic officer service. As we had a very poor people survey results and bring in continuous improvement cells in, the lean techniques, allowing them to have a voice, improved their, their people surveys dramatically because they felt as if we were being listened to and they were being part of continuous improvement. So that was a real, a real plus. So just a reminder that we put in a lean right across the whole of the uh, organisation, both in major projects and smart motorways, uh, maintenance, and also within the business procurement, um, traffic officer service, and within the, the technical areas, lean's being used in all sorts of different ways. I went to Highways England's offices a few weeks ago, and they've got big visual management boards up, and continuous improvement cells still, so they're still very much on the, in the business. Uh, very simply, to deploy lean, your number of stages. The first one, as I've said before, is leadership and engagement, and that's talking to leadership. We actually brought in independent coaches. Senior people, probably like Neil, don't have a lot of time, they're very busy. So the best way to get them to understand the details of lean is to bring a one-to-one -one coach and they work closely with them. And we did that for a number of staff. Improving capability, training, development, 
Um, incidentally, LCI UK now have a free e-learning package. If anyone's interested, speak to me afterwards. I'll, I'll give you this, the link it's through the Supply Chain School. It's a free learning package, and it's actually been deployed uh, down into the supply chain as well uh, and, and, and training the facilitator program. An improvement engine is a fancy word for lean projects. There are now over 600 lean projects in the tracker. There's a tracker that's available with PDFs to download, knowledge packs for every project or most of the projects. So again, if anyone wants a link to that, you're more than welcome. Because any academics in the audience is a kind of uh, gold dust for academics because lots of case studies. But nevertheless, the idea was to tr transfer ideas and knowledge across the business. Now, it's a bit of a jig it might seem a bit like a jigsaw puzzle sometimes, lean, the tools and techniques. These are some of the techniques that were used by Howe and are still used by Howe's England. Visual management, that's seeing things visually. Uh, we have visual management in the room here. But the fact you've got a green sign for emergency exit and evacuation information, that's visual management. So there's nothing secret about it. It is, you can do great things with visual management. Network Rail, for instance, use it routinely uh, for a number of years now, visual management. And so that's worth remembering. CI cells, uh, you have teams working together uh, with boards, visual management, and meet every day or every week to, to, to continuously improve their work. There's all sorts of things they can do in CI cells. I put in place a benefits framework. Every single lean project has recorded benefits, and they're logged and signed off. Um, tracking, I mentioned is a tracker. Uh, always track your projects, keep an eye on them, make sure how they're going, coming along and make sure they get completed. Not every single one in the tracker was fully completed. Um, some didn't come to any, others became hugely successful. Uh, Lean Sigma, very powerful problem solving technique. Um, it can be a bit of a sledgehammer to crack a walnut. So if you use it, I've been trained to green belt level, unlike Neil, not black belt. And using mini tab and statistics is incredibly powerful. It can take a bit of time. And sometimes teams just need simple problem solving techniques. Knowledge transfer, one of the toughest nuts to crack is to actually transfer um, ideas from one area to another. For some reason, uh, there's a kind of NIMBY, not my backyard concept. I'm not going to accept this idea. We don't do it like this, this sort of thing here. We do it differently. And it's, it's a very difficult thing to transfer ideas, I have to say, one of the difficult areas. 5S, standardizing, sifting, shining. It's a Japanese uh, terminology, as maybe some of you have heard. It's sometimes called 5Cs. We've been converted into construction. And it looks at the workplace to make the workplace more efficient lay down areas, and ties in with visual management in terms of um, signing areas of materials and signing routes, etc. So again, a very powerful technique. And not a good technique to bring in first, because it's fairly simple, um, unlike some, some of the others are more complex, like Lean Sigma. Form a community. This is a, a beginnings of a community, or a community that's already in place. That's very important. Use social media. And assess the maturity. I touched on before the, the maturity assessment tool trying and get someone to come in and assess the maturity of your organisation as independently as possible. Contracts are very important. If you use traditional contracts, you won't necessarily get traction. Um, tar we, we, in the UK, we use target contracts, pay and gain, there was a, a gain and incentivisation. You can use traditional, but you don't get as much benefit unless you're a, an, a collaborative form of contract where you, you can share the benefits. And one of the key differences, a lot of the techniques I mentioned before you see in manufacturing have been converted into construction. One of the biggest conversions was by Professor Cascella 25 years ago, where he, he has a seminal paper he put together with Clem Ballard in the States and Sven Bertelsen, and he came up with the idea of last planner. And there's no doubt that's, I think, transformed um, the, the, the system of um, planning and managing projects and work. You can use last planner in a lot, a lot of different scenarios. In design, you can use it with small teams as well. I use it, used to use it with my team. In the UK, we call it collaborative planning and production control. There's a couple of reasons for that. Some of here, I think you'd turn last planner. And finally, put lean in your business. Put it into your transactional areas. Um, ensure that you, you get your teams to use lean thinking um, and start questioning what they do. Very important. And also write down a, a strategy. I mentioned that before. And make sure your strategy is tied into your business. It's not a standalone thing. It has to be tied into the objectives of the, of the business, the driving force of the business. So if a major driving force is cost savings, that has to be a part of the lead program. 
And this is a picture of the lean tracker. I said I'll give you a, a link to that externally, and maybe give a, I'll give Christina a copy of the link. Go and have a look at it. There's many, many case studies. Um, there's 600 different projects in there. And the, the efficiencies, the cost savings, came into many areas. Uh, everything from signing, lighting, managing incidents, winter service, that's more in transactional areas, and the design process, etc. And these are typical examples of the, the, the uh, PDFs you can download as knowledge transfer packs. Uh, so the idea was that you can see there would be a, a, a picture of how they've improved something. You could take it away and use it yourself. And we use A3. Is there any, I don't know if anyone in the audience has come across the A3 concept. You can use it for problem solving or you can use it for reporting. A guy called John Shuka, I think, invented it a number of years ago. Very powerful method. Um, for very simply putting down a report and explaining where you are. And you see why uh, there's a project there for improving the accuracy and producing permits to dig for the managed motorway. A major project, a case study, again, we'll be talking more about the workshop tomorrow, uh, was optimising surface productivity. Normally, on a possession overnight, about 250 tonnes of asphalt would be placed. Thanks to the Lean project, we've not got time today to explain how we did it, it was kind of a, a long the Lean Sigma techniques, but observational and taking statistics, uh, that went to 1,000 tonnes. And I understand now this is more routinely done, a uh, far greater number of, um, of, of, of tonnes of asphalt laid. And the reason for that was there was a lot of waiting, lot, there was issues between the coating plants and bringing material in, I, you know, again I can go in more detail tomorrow at the workshop. Uh, but it was surprisingly straightforward to get that 1,000 tonnes down. A lot of work for the lean improvement practitioner, but actually we managed to do it reasonably well. And some pictures of what visual management looks like. This is on the smart motorway in the M60. Uh, you can see it's not necessarily all that pretty. It's very uh, workaday. They've actually improved this and they made it a bit more um, formalised, but this is what you would probably see. You can see the people put little pictures up. They know where the plant is at any one time. And the great thing for me was it's in a big hangar and teams would, the, the, the workforce would come in and look at it every night. And I could see individuals coming in to look at it to make sure they knew where the plant was, what possessions were going on, if necessary. And so visual mind is a very powerful technique. Collaborative planning is used routinely. That's visualising the plan. And the thing about last planner, collaborative planning, is looking ahead and reviewing and improving and particularly measuring a number of activities that are planned to do against the number are actually done. And you can often graph that. That's a hanger there, but we have the visual management, the M60. These are typical performance charts from, from last planner, collaborative planning. And um, the, the, the concept is to look for root causes. So for instance, if it was a, a piece of activity was held up, it might be because the scaffolding came late on, on board or the pipes didn't arrive, that would be logged and it would be a, a, a discussion about how they could improve that in the future. So doing last planner, collaborative planning, is a, a high level activity, lots of you know, sticky is very good, but you've got to get down to production control. And that's the thing that differentiates uh, last planner from ordinary planning in my opinion. And the, the very strange thing is if you get to 80% of activities done as planned, you finish on time. Now, I think it's a good opportunity for a PhD student or MSE student to do some work on that. Why is that? Maybe somebody in the audience can tell me, but it's a strange thing. When you get to 80% and above, you're on time or better. So there are some pictures of uh, what you would look like in a last planner. And also the maturity assessment toolkit. Again, that's all on, on the internet. And the maturity... Uh, assessment is, is very simple. It's a number of simple questions asked of the supply chain. You can do it at project level as well. You can do it in an organization. It's quite um, compatible with different organizations. And you ask questions like, um, have you got lean leadership engagement? Uh, do you understand what customer value is? And one of the things that often surprises me is we have a conversation about, do you have a problem solving technique in your business? Very often organizations will say, well, people are they're engineers, they're professional people. And, Accountants, they know how to problem solve, but very often they don't do it systematically. And Lean gives you a systematic method of problem solving. Uh, and things like collaboration. So there's lots of, again, this is all on the internet if you want to read more about it. Right, I'm coming to the end now, so I'm into question time. But lessons learned. As I said, I showed you the timeline. It wasn't smooth. There was a, ten, there was a thing called post hoc justification or um, 
why things happened in the past. And we kind of make that up as we go along, I think. Things happen sometimes by chance, uh, sometimes by plan. But the thing, things we've learned during that time is you must have a top-down strategy. That's why Neil Scales' involvement is so important. And Neil's got to understand what lean is at a certain level. And there has to be a deployment and benefits target. You've got to set yourself some sort of target. What are you, what are you trying to achieve? This leadership is very important, not just talking about lean, but actually um, giving the resources and the time to people to do lean, to learn about it, to do it for real. It's very important. And the thing to remember is lean is actually a change program for your business. As I said before, you don't have to call it lean, you can call it what you like, as long as you use the lean principles. But it's trans it supports transformation. So if you want to change your culture, lean will change your culture. Maybe quite slowly to start with, but you'll look back and realise you've changed. And don't expect staff to do it as a part of their day job, make resources available, and establish a core team. Don't just allow it to happen in isolation, but look across the board and give a, a number of people uh, expectations to do it as a day job, not just as an as, as, as add-on to the day job. And try and identify senior leaders who generally believe in Lean and actively support the programme. And, I, and that's one of the things that happened in Hives England. Graham Dalton, Alan Cook, Chief Hives engineer, Ginny Clark, who was the Chief Hives engineer at the time, they really understood it and supported it. Very important to do that. And you've probably seen this before, I've used it a few times now, and I presume it's a tribute to Albert Einstein, but I don't know about you, if you have sometimes been on a, a computer program, you say, hang on a minute, I've gone back to the beginning again, two or three times, you have a tendency to do that, easily done, but doing the same thing over and over, and expecting the same results is really a definition of insanity. So please, what I've said today, try and take it back into your workplace, into your organisations, and learn lean and do it well. Thank you very much.